so death to me is very important in, in storytelling. Um, I I remember I don't know if I told you the story, Matt, but um, Transformers the movie when it came out in the late eighties. Um, yep. I I grew up in the Bronx and if you've ever been to a cinema in the Bronx during that time uh, it was always very loud very crazy um, and it was one of those typical things where when, when the movie has dialogue you kind of yell back at the movie too you know it's one of those very okay. interactive moments but I want to see right. Transformers the movie something different happened that I've never seen ever happen in any movie I ever watched there um, when uh, spoiler alert when Optimus Prime mm-hmm. dies the whole theater became silent. No one said a word at all. And wow. we were all shocked because uh, Hasbro did something very brave. They actually, very brave and very stupid because I don't think they realized what they were doing. They were they thought it was, oh, let's kill off these characters so that we could introduce a new line of characters to sell new brand of toys to while realizing that yeah. these kids are kind of attached to these characters <laughs> so that when they started killing them off, there, were this, there was this shock that happened um yeah. and it 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 hurt Hasbro for a little bit but I know for myself as a fan I loved it because to me it made the story more real more important you know it made me want to follow what happened before what happened in this movie and what happened afterwards and and at at one sure. point also comic books were just like that too you know when uh when Phoenix died we all knew that was permanent when the Flash died in in uh Crisis of Earth Supergirl that was permanent and it 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 it, it, as a fan, although you were kind of sad to see these characters go, the, the fact that they died and had an impact on the characters, how uh, Kid Flash became Flash, and how he became to fit that role was a very important to me, a very important story arc. Uh, so for me, death is very important, and especially important in role-playing games. Um, how do you feel about that, Matt? Well, um... I agree, um, and uh, I remember the first time I saw a story with death in it. Um, it was uh, Robotech, and uh, I watched that as a kid. And spoiler alert: <laughs> first episode, they uh, they go inside the super dimensional fortress there, and some, you know, some automatic um, anti. Some automatic traps pop out of the ceiling and gun down a bunch of people. Literally, gun down, they're dead. And I was amazed. It's a, it's a cartoon that killed somebody. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and uh, it, you know, I was more invested in the story. I, I wanted to see what the story was going to do next. Um, you know, and and at the gaming table, uh, I think the threat of death makes the game have uh, greater stakes it, it feels you know it feels more heroic if it's a heroic game because you know um the whole idea of the hero's quest quest is that uh, you're overcoming great odds it's death defying to do something and it can't really be death defying unless somebody dies <laughs> or at least there's a credible feeling of death there um in other sort of games, and uh, you know, a horror game, death has to be um, a real presence there to, to kind of give the story weight. Um, I, I think in a lot of um, in a lot of more uh, modern games, D and D, for instance, there is a feeling um, on you know, Wizard, Wizard of the Coast that if they kill their player or their characters, not players, if they kill the their characters, the players will lose interest in the game. And so they want to keep them coming back. Um, and who knows, maybe they're right. Maybe the casual player doesn't want to you know, invest that time and have the player, the character die and then have to make another one. But I think the game loses something if death isn't on the table. Um, now, you know, does death belong in all games? Obviously not. Definitely not. There are some games where it, it, it doesn't work. I'm running a game right now, which is a, which is um, 
a science fiction comedy game, no death. <laughs> um, and I accomplished this with uh, a ridiculous level of medical technology. You know, if if you're if they pick up your head and put it in a box, they can grow you another body. That's fine. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> um, <laughs> just so our viewers know, Emmanuel's head is in a box waiting for the rest of them to grow back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll tell that story someday. I think for some game masters, and I've seen sometimes uh, people comment this on social media, that uh, they feel terrible when a character dies. And, and I, I can understand that. Um, because sometimes, especially if you're playing with someone and they're investing in a character and you're investing in the story and you want them to live so they could be part of that story, how it ends, and sometimes they don't make it or sometimes they die, find a big bad boss at the end. Um, but I, I don't I don't want Game Masters to compromise. You know, I'm, I am totally okay when my characters die, you know, uh, because it makes the story much better. It makes my game experience much better. What if I'll... It, I actually get annoyed at times when when game masters like they see them like maybe two hit points away that they kind of give me this suddenly this, this uh, healing potion that appears out of nowhere or something like that. Like they have to bend the the gaming rules or the reality rules of, uh, so that yeah. my character can live. And I get uh, and I mean I I appreciate it, but I, I get a little annoyed because I I I want I I I don't know. It's like if. By doing that, you make the game my game experience cheaper. I wanna, I want that thrill of like, okay, I have two hit points left. Um, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in a blaze of glory. Or, or all right, maybe I have to re, or give me a chance to rethink my scenario. Like, or, like, okay, if we're in a trap and I have two hit points left, maybe I need to think my way out instead of trying to blast my way out. You know, so it gets, it, it forces right. force me to think different options. And without the fear yeah. of death, you know, it's like you're right. Five E D and D. There's things I like about it, but I, I really wish uh, it's gonna sound weird. Death was easier um, uh, <laughs> in in D and D five E. I mean, you know, and of course, there's the right there. There's a right way and a wrong way to uh, kill characters. Um, you know, you don't want to kill them arbitrarily, um, it, unless you're playing paranoia in which case you want to kill them arbitrarily over and over and over again <laughs> but um you know you uh you, ideally death will be the result of uh character action they died because they did something foolish or they died because they didn't run away or they died because their dice let them down um, you know, you shouldn't just randomly kill them. That's what NPCs are for. <laughs> um, you know, but the operative word in role-playing games is always games, right? We're there to have fun. So whatever makes the game fun for you and your group is what you want to do. And sometimes it's death. Or the the or the um, or the specter of death, and and so um, you know. But that's something again. You want to talk to your players about. You want to say. You want them to know. Okay, this is going to be a really gritty game. If you guys screw up or get unlucky, you're gonna die. Or you know, this is kind of a this is a humorous game, and death isn't part of it. You're not gonna. Die. And you know you want to you want to think about what sort of rules you lay down and the effect they're going to have on the way your players are going to play the game, All right? Because um, if death is a constant fear, your players hopefully um, will become more cautious and. Uh, they will try to think their way out of problems, or kind of they might avoid contact, uh, combat, and um, that may be what you want, or it may not. If you want a crazy game where people are just going to jump right in there, maybe you do want to lessen up on the idea of death, um, or take it off the table completely. If you have a comedy game, if you're playing Ghostbusters or, or something, and you want your players to do crazy things, you know, you take death off the table. The worst that's going to happen is they get beat up and thrown in the hospital in a humorous montage. So, 
<laughs> so then they'll do crazy, they'll do crazier things and they'll take more chances. Uh, you always want to be conscious of what's going to happen. But, um, you know, I think uh, death is just one of the many tools of the G. Even death by gelatinous cube. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't be afraid to kill him. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, I mean, use common sense. If you're playing with kids and if you're playing a, a light system with them, you know, um, um, uh, you know, you, for them to have a good experience, maybe death may not be a good thing for them. Um, um, also, if you're playing and every session you tend to all your players tend to die over and over again unless your players really like that but if you if you think that, that that's happening way too often and the players seem frustrated maybe um scale it back a bit maybe your adventures are too too uh um uh just too off balance uh just you know kind of look at the rules kind of look at the monsters that are set that are setting your setting and and maybe scale it back a little bit uh because you know again death should be a tool but it shouldn't you shouldn't have to like ruin your campaign if it gets to that point scale it back that's the other reason i think um, people sometimes avoid death because it does make things trickier what do you do with the player when their character dies if you've got a if you've got a five hour session and somebody dies on hour two what are they going to do for three hours one thing that I, I do some, that I often do in adventures, uh, and I got this idea from uh, DCC modules, uh, are replacement characters. So you're walking your way through the dungeon. Um, you find a cell, and in the cell is a replacement character, a level three dwarf, right? <laughs> so if you have your character who's died, you know, you say, okay, you go get some pizza, you know, chill out for, for 20 minutes and come back. 20 minutes later, the party has reached the room with the replacement character in, and then you can take, say, okay, now you're playing the door. There you go. And if you don't need the replacement character, the room's empty. There's nobody there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm a big believer in changing the, um, changing the uh, adventure to suit the needs, you know, uh, and you can put in or remove replacement characters. Um, so you, you want to you want to figure that out. You know, yeah, character death can totally destroy. You know, the the epic quest, right? Um, if the characters all uh, fail their saving throw and die to certain trap before they get through the dungeon, that's the end of the game. They're all dead. Um, but I, you know, I kind of like that. Um, it, it feels a little more realistic. You know, it's not, the game isn't, it isn't a narrative, you know, it doesn't have a pre-subscribed end. It's kind of, you know, and those are the stories you tell afterwards. You tell years later, remember that time we didn't make it there or, you know, um so death can be risky but to both the players and the gm and the game but i think it's a necessary risk yeah i think some of my favorite adventures when i think back on them was always the ones that either i nearly died or have died because it uh, the the this made i don't know this made the adventure my experience so much better that thrill well, there you go you can't you can't brag about a story if you didn't barely survive. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I marched in there and beat them up and walked them full health. Okay, great. <laughs> anyway, there you go. All right, everyone. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this, this episode of the podcast. Let us know um, if you're on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And I guess we'll see you soon.